Yo guys, Jonathan here, and if you want a Mac, the breakaway puck from Sonnet is one of the coolest gadgets I've come across. It's compact, really simple to use, and with it, I've seen performance gains of double, even sometimes triple, which is crazy. Before we hop into that though, let's check out a quick word from today's sponsor, SetApp. What it is, is a curated collection of 150 plus apps for your Mac. And I say 150 plus because that collection is constantly growing. Bartender, which gives you full control over your menu bar and iStat menus, which gives you a deep dive into your Mac's performance are two of my favorites. And those are just scratching the surface. The beauty is you can install apps as you go. It's almost like you have this giant ninja collection where you can pick and choose depending on what your project is. And on top of that, it also supports the app developers and creators so everybody wins. What's even cooler though, is you can check out the entire collection free for seven days by checking out the link below. And that's it, you found SetApp. So contrary to the internet, if you're looking to add more performance to your Mac, one of the simplest ways to do that is not by downloading more RAM, it's by adding an external graphics card or eGPU for short. They come in all sorts of sizes and flavors and configurations, but what I like most about the breakaway puck is that it's relatively compact to the point where you could even throw this in a bag and travel with it. I say relatively compact because the power supply that comes with it is a thick boy to the max. Like it is disproportionately big compared to the puck. And if I had one complaint about this, it is definitely that. Now inside here is a Radeon RX 560. And if you're watching from the PC Master Race, first off, what's up? Tell Linus I said hi. And second, slam the brakes for one second. I realize you can absolutely grab an external enclosure and throw in a more powerful graphics card on paper, but there's actually a couple reasons why I'd go with this over a BYOGC. The first again is the size. Yeah, you definitely got that thick boy power supply, but even with that, it's still more compact than something like a Blackmagic external GPU or the build your own option that leads to one, more desk space, and two, the ability to take that on the road. Like imagine this with a 13 inch MacBook Pro and an iPad plus sidecar. That sounds like a really awesome video drop like if you guys wanna see that. But the second and potentially even more important reason is again, yes, there are more powerful graphics cards on paper, but this one in terms of GPU utilization, no bottleneck from the CPU hits the sweet spot. Now this is geared to work with a Thunderbolt 3 equipped Mac, so it's gonna make a great PIC with a 13 inch MacBook Air, 13 inch MacBook Pro, Mac Mini, essentially anything without a dedicated graphics card, which also includes a 21.5 inch iMac. Where I saw this absolutely shine though, is when you pair it with the baseline 13 inch MacBook Pro, which starts out at 1299. Essentially for the price of the higher end 13 inch MacBook Pro, you have a monster combo that destroys it in performance. To ice the cake, this will also power your MacBook Pro and give you the ability to add up to four additional monitors. So it's pretty much a win in every possible way. Now I've openly said, don't buy a Mac just for gaming. Bad idea. If you want to do that, build a PC, hit up Linus. But if you own a Mac and want to do a little gaming on the side, the breakaway puck makes a huge difference. In Rise of the Tomb Raider, without the puck, it is pretty ugly. You have a beautiful slideshow of just under 12 frames per second. So again, don't buy a Mac for gaming. But when you throw that puck in, that's where it nearly triples the performance at 28 frames per second. Now gaming performance will obviously depend on the developers and the game itself, but we also saw some pretty substantial jumps in Fortnite as well. Again, with medium settings at 1080p without the puck, you're looking at a smooth 17 frames per second, but then adding the puck in takes you from 17 to 38. Now, aside from gaming, where using an eGPU really matters is video editing. And if you follow me, you know Final Cut Pro 10, that's my go-to. And I think if you make YouTube videos, that is absolutely what you should be using, Devin. CKID, I am looking at you. But alternatively, I've recently really dove deep into the Adobe Premiere world. And I gotta give them credit where credit's due because they have done an excellent job of really making sure you're getting the most out of GPUs on Mac. What I did was take my Dream Desk 6 project and then exported that in 4K. Without the puck and just integrated graphics, that export took just under 21 minutes. But when you add it in, it cuts it all the way down to nine minutes and 50 seconds. Again though, the beautiful thing here is seeing all those CPU cores running full speed, all that graphics utilization, no bottleneck, and the end result here is cutting your export essentially in half. So that was really more of an average use case scenario, but to take things to the extreme level, what I did was take a Red Raw 5K project. It was only about three minutes, but without the eGPU on that poor 13 inch MacBook Pro, the export to H.264 4K took essentially one hour. Honestly, I wanted to call some sort of services for unfair labor because Premiere 
was just putting all that work on the CPU. I'm not sure where the integrated graphics was, if it was maybe out in the parking lot just chilling, but it was nowhere to be found and it was pretty heartbreaking to see. Enter the breakaway puck and that restored balance. It took some of the work off the CPU, thank goodness, because that was just painful to watch. But all that GP utilization is something I'm just not normally used to seeing in Premiere and it is a beautiful thing. End result is honestly the biggest jump in performance I've seen with this eGPU. Again, it took an hour to export three minutes of red 5K raw. With the eGPU, brought that all the way down to 13 minutes and change, which is magical. Now with Final Cut Pro 10, one of the biggest reasons I use it is speed and not just for exports. I realize there is more to a program than just export speed. It's rendering, it's the actual workflow. It just allows me to make videos and not concentrate on dumb stuff. With Final Cut Pro 10, it's actually a little harder to quantify or to measure performance one-to-one -one compared to Premiere because it works differently. The rendering actually happens in the background. So when you hop into Safari or to Chrome to grab graphics or maybe a music track or grab a drink of water, it's chugging away at your timeline in the background doing work for you. The heavy lifting, whether it's color correction, effects, text, titles, optical flow, image stabilization, the more powerful your graphics card is, the faster all that's gonna happen in the background. So again, this isn't a traditional Final Cut Pro 10 workflow, but if you were to turn background rendering off, which you normally wouldn't, and let it go from start to finish, this project is my video on the OnePlus 7T. It's about seven minutes long, 4K, ProRes HQ, text, titles, color correction. And again, this is with the baseline 13 inch MacBook Pro without the eGPU, that entire render took 18 minutes and 47 seconds, but adding that eGPU, it brought it all the way down to nine minutes and 30 seconds. Now where things get slightly weird and a little confusing, and I hope Apple works this out with future Catalina updates, is that it's actually faster, or at least when going to H.264 to unplug the eGPU when you're exporting. The reason being is when you're exporting single pass H.264, quick sync and T2 acceleration is taking over. So when you have that eGPU plugged in, I think it kind of confuses Final Cut where it doesn't know if I should use the graphics card or the integrated graphics and it ends up being slower. So weirdly enough, the dream setup is when you're editing, doing your rendering, your background rendering, leave the eGPU plugged in, use all that power. Then when you're done, unplug it, export and you have a magic combination. Again, I hope they fix this and address it because you shouldn't have to think about, should I use the eGPU, should I not? It should just work. So to recap, if you're in Final Cut Pro 10, during the edit, during the background render, use the eGPU. When you're done and that timeline is rendered out, unplug it and let the integrated acceleration do its thing. So Final Cut quirks aside, this makes a huge difference. And again, if you own a Thunderbolt 3 equipped Mac without dedicated graphics, this is a relatively inexpensive way to add a ton of performance without adding bulk. More than anything though, this has me super excited for the Mac Pro because what they're doing with metal and GPU acceleration right now is bananas. And with this, we should see more and more options pop up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you guys drop a like and I'll catch you guys later.